Hey guys, this is Dr. K. We're going to sh the uh, software that we use to analyze the data. Now you could have saved a text file and also exported that into Excel, but I thought this was a little bit better. There is quite a sizable download with this. Uh, you may want to download it and share it with your friends. Uh, the links that you see on the screen are the ones that are available on Blackboard in a file. You'll try to install that and then use the password substance. Once you do that and you load the program, it'll come in something like this. It'll install a bunch of files actually. It's fairly large. You don't want to download the video version, to be honest. And we're going to open the file. And I saved my file to the experiments folder but you could very easily put it in my documents or on your desktop in a folder and that'd be just as easy to find. Remember this is just one data file you'll have several of them to save. And then what we have to do is we have to try to find where in the data we want to start. Now this region that's at the top we really don't want to use. That's just me running to make sure I've got some decent data coming in. This is where the injection happens and the dilution of the solution occurs this is probably or this is probably the first data point so if I begin to highlight here what the program does on the left hand side if you notice is it shows you which data points it's selecting so now these I'm gonna click over here and drag down I don't want to collect all the data because down here the this amount of signal that we have is so low that it's going to introduce too much noise. So I'll just use the data in the region which seems to be most useful. And I'm just going to copy that. Next thing I'll do is open up an Excel file. And paste that data in. I think I want to paste it down in here because I'm going to want to put some headers on top of my data. This is time. We're going to have to fix that because we don't want to start our analysis at time is equal to 34. I mean, you really can, but it's really more traditional to start with time is zero. This is absorbance. Now, absorbance is not concentration, and so what we're going to have to do is correct that to be concentration. I'm just typing the headers in using the cursor keys to move over natural log of concentration and 1 over concentration. If you remember this is a zero order plot, a first order plot, and a second order plot. And I just put those up there to help remind you. I'm going to neaten this up a little bit. And now what we have to do is convert absorbance to concentration. Now if you remember that absorbance is equal to E B C is how it's often done. Um, C is the concentration. E B is actually equal to one times ten actually sorry, one point three times ten to the sixth. So what you can do then is say concentration is equal to that's just the equal key off the keyboard absorbance and you notice how I, I move the cursor to the left by using the keyboard divided by 1.3 e6 now that's the molarity of the die I want the natural log of that, so it's going to be the equal to ln and then close parenthesis. And I also want 1 divided by, so equal to 1 divided by the concentration. Now, it, rather than typing all that in over and over and over again, I'm going to highlight these three boxes. Grab the little corner little black dot at the corner and drag it down and now that formula has been pasted over and they all reference these cells over here. Now the other bit that I have to do is I have to change the time. Now my starts at 34 but I really want it to start at 0 
and the next time is actually two seconds in my analysis so I put zero and two I highlight that I grab the corner and I drag it down it automatically fills those in finally I need to make a graph and I find the easiest way to do this actually is you're gonna make a number of graphs is to highlight all the data go insert and we're gonna do a scatter plot you notice there's a bunch of data in there and you notice each one series one two three and four those are the columns one two three and four I'm gonna get rid of series four then I'm gonna get rid of series two Oops. Let me get rid of series three. And there's your concentration versus time graph. Next thing you want to do is format. There's a bunch of quick layouts, and actually some of these are pretty good for this kind of stuff. But uh, we're going to choose, so oh, let's say this one. Don't need that. I'll get rid of that. And over here, what we're going to do is type concentration and it's in units of or sorry absorbance so this is absorbance of FDC oh, FDC number one versus time bottom axis is time oops I mean to double click that I just hit enter to activate that time in seconds. So there's the first graph. That's those two over there. Now we'll make another graph. I'm just going to go through the same thing again. I want these. I could also have it choose the headers automatically. I'm going to insert, scatter. You get rid of this um, top graph that's series two and now it's in units of concentration and you notice how funny those look so what I'm going to do is double click on this and I'm going to change the number type to scientific I want two decimal places maybe even one decimal place and close that and that looks a little bit better the time is okay and now what we're going to do is do a quick layout probably to be consistent use the same kind of layout concentration I think I typed that right in molarity units and over here what we're going to do is again is say time in seconds and then delete the series and give it a chart title like concentration versus time or you can even call it first order graph if you like. So there's another graph. And then we're going to do the third graph, the LN of concentration. Right, insert, scatter plot. And again, we're going to get rid of these guys. Oops, double clicked by accident. And you notice, wow, that's a really nice graph. I'm going to delete that. And then we're going to do chart tools. We're going to do layout, or uh, design, sorry, quick layout. And then you can fill in the, the information that you need here. And I'm not going to do that, but next thing we want to do is actually do a linear regression. So you know we did this in class on your calculator but if you right click on a data point you can see a dialog that opens up that says add trend line that was a right click we want this to be a linear trend line we want the equation on the chart and we want to do r squared and there is my trend line with the r value 
and I don't really need a legend but that is the equation for the line this value that I'm highlighting here with my cursor is actually the rate constant for this particular reaction so there you go that's how you do it I'll leave the second order chart entirely up to you and you can pair the first order and second order charts uh, to each other in your report